So Hare Krishna devotees, Prabhuji's and Mataji's, welcome to today's class. And we shall today continue with our Bhakti Yoga. In Bhakti Yoga, we know that we have been, we have seen the uh, opulences of the Absolute and we have seen in the last chapter uh, and before that the most confidential knowledge Lord Krishna gave to Arjuna. So these are basically the crux or the, the, the main part of Bhagavad Gita. In chapter num number 9 when uh, illusion of Arjuna was dispelled and illusion of Arjuna was that Lord Krishna is just a, his friend, an ordinary human being and after knowing his opulences, and the, after the, he got confidential knowledge about his opulences from Lord Krishna, he was fully convinced and illusion had gone. And in chapter 10, the 82 opulences that he showed uh, for the benefit of others as well as Arjuna, because Arjuna asked how to see, because everybody cannot see you your, your transcendental form. It is only pure devotees who can see. But your manifestations, you say that you pervade all universe in all your manifestations, which are innumerable and immense. So Lord Arjuna uh, uh, request Lord Krishna to show his opulences. And whatever is most beautiful, most magnificent, most powerful, and most extraordinary, Lord Krishna pervades is present in all those things. And we saw how he is among the stars, among the animal, and among the, amongst the fish, among the rishis, among the uh, uh, syllables. He, he is uh, present in what, what, uh, the most finest form. So that was what we learned in uh, chapter number 10. And now we, before we move on to chapter number 11, the universal form of Lord, we let us pray to Sri Sri Radha Bhavinji. And pay our obeisances to Sri Namnish Das Prabhuji, who is the temple president of Kulai uh, Bangalore, and who has provided us this platform to uh, have the blessing of Lord Krishna by listening his message through Arjuna. So, Om Agyan Timiran Dasi Gyanan Jan Shalakya Chakshurun Militamena Tasme Shri Gurbe Nama Om Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Peshtaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedant Swaminiti Namine Namaste Saraswati Devi Gaurvani Pracharani Nirvishesha Shunivadi Pashat Desha Tarani Jayo Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advait Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktubhinda, He Krishna Karna Sindhu, Deen Bandhu Jagatpate, Gopesh Gopika Kanta, Shri Radha Kanta Namostute, Rapt Kanchan Gaurangi, Shri Radhe Vrindavaneshwari, Vrashubhanu Sute Devi, Pranamami Hari Priye, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Ram Rama Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Ram Rama Hare Hare So welcome devotees Prabhuji and Mataji to today's class. We'll continue with this chapter. And in the chapter 10, just a very quick summary uh, recapitulation. Krishna is unknowable and source of all because he was he is the Adi Purush, the primary primeval Lord, and nothing existed before Krishna. Every he is the primary creator, including the sec, and he created Brahmaji, who is the secondary creator, who he created uh, through whom, whom the um, spiritual and this uh, cosmic manifestations and material worlds and universes and planets were created. Then he talked about pure bhakti, which is the essence of Bhagavad Gita, the Chatush Loki Gita, verse number 8 to 11, Machit Madhgata Prana. Arjuna then accepted Krishna after listening to Chatush, uh, Chatush Loka. Krishna, uh, Arjuna accepted Krishna as supreme position, uh, Param Dhamam Param Brahmam. And uh, Ultimately, thereafter, Lord Krishna describes his vibhuti, 19 to 38, and thereafter, in, in the end, Krishna says, why there is need to know all this about me? Because I pervade this entire in cosmic manifestation through a spark of my energy. That is a very small 
fragment of energy has created all these spiritual and material worlds. There is no need to know all these things. Just know me and just surrender unto me, worship me, get absorbed in me. And pay obeisances to unto me. So now this uh, now Sarana Mataji was singing beautifully reciting. I will request her to read all the shlokas on the presentations and I will explain further. Yes, Mataji, you may unmute yourself, please. Arjuna Uvacha, this is your Hare Krishna. Aya Paramam, Guhya Madhyatma Sangitam, Yatva Yoktam Vachastena, Moho Yam Vigato Mama. Moho, I am Bigatu, Mama. My illusion is now gone. And the illusion was that he, Krishna is an ordinary person. He is a friend of mine. He has played with me. Uh, and he, they, have, they have slept together on a single, same bed. And they have eaten together from the same. Even they have spoken harsh words to each other also. Now, Arjun is very, very... Uh, clear about his mind that Krishna is supreme personality of God and he is not an ordinary person. So in, in these verses, Krishna says, O Lord, uh, Arjuna says, O Lord aside one, I have heard from you in detail about the appearance and disappearance of every living entity as realized through your inexhaustible glories. O greatest of all personalities, O supreme form, though I see here before me your actual position, I yet wish to see how you have entered into it to, into this cosmic manifestation. I want to see that form of yours. Now the question immediately comes, when Arjun is fully convinced about the transcendence, about the, uh, the divinity, about the uh, transcendental nature of Krishna, uh, Krishna then he, why he wants to see all these things? Why he wants, he has already explained that I pervade everything of the rivers, of the mountains, of the animals, of the fish, of the rishis, of the stars, of the seasons. I am this, this, and you can already visualize. So that can anybody answer or think of why he is asking Krishna uh, to show this universal form? Because they are sitting in the same chariot and they are talking to each other. Yet he is pervading, so his mind Still, there is some kind of, you know, a speck of doubt. Why? Uh, how come he is pervading all these universe? He wants to see. For reconfirmation, he wants to see that. So, first reason why he wants to see you know, that he wants Krishna to substantiate his statement that he pervades everything. Second reason is he wants to see this universal form because so that imposters, somebody might say that I am Bhagwan. So if Bhagavan is only Krishna and only Krishna can show this universal form, he can only pervade this entire universe or cosmic manifestation. Nobody else can. So if imposter makes say that I am Krishna, I am all powerful, I am Bhagavan. So that just to rule out. Secondly, to convince people like us, because we, we are Mura, we have, uh, we have low intelligence the poor fund of knowledge also. And we are so materially, materially entangled that we do not understand the divine nature of Sri Krishna. So, and then lastly, that not only convinced that Krishna is divine, that is, is his supreme personality for Godhead, so that he, Arjun wants to, for everybody to know and by convincingly that yes, Krishna is. So these are four reasons why Krishna, what Arjuna wants that Krishna should see him, uh, should exhibit his universal form, and how everything is resting in him, or how he is pervading in uh, entire universe in cosmos. Now, if you think that I am able to behold behold your cosmic form, oh my Lord, oh Master of all mystic power, then kindly show me that universal form. Now, this is a very polite submission of a devotee. If you think, if you think that I am eligible, I am a pure devotee and I am eligible to see your universal form, then please show. If you feel that I am not eligible, I am not qualified to see your universal form, then it's okay. This is what, this is how the attitude. That means the devotee has to be very submissive and very, very polite and uh, hum, uh, full of humility so far as his, when he approaches his spiritual master. 
So then he requested, kindly show me that universal form itself. So universal form, I told you there are four reasons. Just to substantiate Krishna's statement that he pervades everywhere. Just to prove for others the divinity of Krishna, that he is supreme personality of Godhead, and he is the Adi Purush, and everything uh, emanates from him. Third point, that he wants others to be convinced that Krishna is indeed the creator. And lastly, to avoid the imposters who might say that I am I am all powerful and all these things. And verse number 11.5. Now, blessed Lord said, My dear Arjuna, O son of Pratha, behold now my opulences, hundreds of thousands of varied divine forms, multicolored like the sea. Now, we have already seen that with with uh, uh, that now Krishna has agreed to sh show his uh, universal form. But there, you know, there are in battlefield there are large number of people who are there. So, but nobody can behold. Even the demigods have not seen the divine uh, this form of Lord Krishna. So, when the Lord is now describing his universal form that. My opulences, which I have just described in chapter number 10, uh, the opulences of the Lord or Supreme or the Absolute, they are innumerable. But there are hundreds of thousands, hundreds, hundreds of thousands. So now Krishna is telling Arjuna that whatever you want to see, all at once in this body, you know, our vision is material. We can see only to a small distance, to a small area only. But all at once, it is not possible for anybody to see. Only divine Krishna can see everything because he is pervading everything. And he is, as I told you, he is that, like a chief engineer of a project, knows directly or indirectly what is happening in his project areas anywhere. Similarly, Krishna has the, is the chief creator. So he knows everything about his creation. So he says, whatever you wish to see, you can see all at once in his body. That means he is going to show, show his universal form. Now, this universal form can show you all that you now desire, as well as whatever you may desire in the future. Because Arjun, Arjuna is a pure devotee. But you know, as a human being, vision, our vision, our mental faculties, our power of thinking and contemplating is very, very limited. So Krishna has said that not only what you want to see now, but you might desire sometime in future. Everything here is here completely. But you cannot see me with your present eyes. Therefore, I give to you divine eyes by which you can behold my mystic opulences. And divine eyes, uh, uh, so divine without divine eyes, nobody can see uh, Krishna's universal form. So, we remember that he is in the battlefield and there are thousands of thousands of soldiers and you know uh, army chiefs and also the Kauravas are there other Pandavas are also there so without they can't see this uh, universal form so Krishna grants him divine uh, vision to see this or, or Divit Chakshu and uh, who else could see this divine uh, form this universal form Anybody would like to respond? Who else was watching besides Arjuna? Who else was watching that's divine form or universal form of Lord Krishna? Sanjay. Sanjay, yes, Mataji, very nice. And there were a couple of people more who saw this divine universal form. Hanumanji sitting on the pataka of the chariot. He could see this universal form. The demigods who had never seen this before because it was so fearsome, they also could see. And there was another person, the grandson of Bhima. What was the name of grandson of Bhima? Son of Ghatotkach? Barbarika. Krishna had cut it. He wanted to finish this battle within a minute. He said, give me a chance to fight this Kauravas and I finish the battle within all the and he has the boons to kill everybody, selectively kill everybody and selectively spare everybody. So Krishna was uh, Krishna wanted this battle to take place between Kaurava and Pandavas. So Krishna deceptively cut his head and hid head. Then he after his head was cut, he prayed to Krishna that please let me watch. Okay, I will not fight. 
on behalf of the Pandavas, but let me watch this battle. So his head was put on the top of a mountain and he was watching this battle. And when he, uh, at the end of the battle, when uh, somebody, uh, he was asked, what did you watch in the battle? He said that I saw Krishna fighting from both sides. You see, this is the person. So there are four persons. First is Arjuna. Second is Barbarika, the grandson of Bhima. The third is Hanuman. And fourth is demigods who appeared when Krishna showed his universal form. And of course, Sanjaya, as Mataji said, because Sanjaya, Sanjaya had the blessings of Vyasadeva, Rishi Vyasadeva, who had given him the divine vision. So they were, Dhritarashtra and Sanjaya, they were sitting long distance away, yet Sanjaya was able to see that uh, divine form or the universal form. Yes, Mataji? Sanjaya Vachin. Thank you, Mataji. Sanjay said, O King is speaking thus, the Supreme, the Lord of all mystic powers, the personality of God had displays, displayed his universal form to Arjuna. Now in this picture you can see Sanjay is sitting so composed and quiet. He, he is not bewildered but see the reaction of Dhratrast. Now Sanjay is able to see the universal form and describe it to Dhratrast. Now Dhratrast is very much bewildered. He is so afraid and scared because he knows now that probably Kauravas are going not going to win this battle. So Arjuna's uh, now this is description of Sanjay, what, what he saw he is describing to Dhratrast. Arjuna saw in that universal form unlimited mouths and unlimited eyes. It was all wondrous. These unlimited mouths and unlimited eyes, they are all living entities present in all the 14 lokas. They were seen within the body of this universal form. It was all wondrous because it is impossible to see so many, everybody all the creation in at one place. The form was decorated with divine dazzling ornaments and arrayed in many garbs. He was garlanded gloriously and there were many scents smeared over his body. All was magnificent, all expanding, unlimited. This was seen by Arjuna. So he is describing that, you know, with naked eyes, nobody could have seen. So we can see only one thing at a time, but everything, all creation, all living entities, all uh, cosmic manifestations, they, are, they were visible. And yet there was the body of Krishna, which was so beautifully decorated with garlands, with ornaments, with jewels. And there it was also smeared with uh, perfumes or uh, beautiful scents, aromas. In 12, he says, if hundreds of thousands of suns rose up at once into the sky, they might resemble the effulgence of Supreme Person in that universal form. Now, just imagine hundreds of thousands of suns. We, if we are asked to stare uh, uh, the, at the sun for not even for a minute or a few seconds, we can watch uh, that glare or the uh, brilliance of the sun shine. So there were hundreds of thousands of suns it was it must have been having a blinding effect so you can imagine that what kind of glare or effulgence was uh, emitting from his now i i'll ask one two things i would like to add one thing more that who else also saw the universal form yashoda ma saw the universal form you will remember once when Krishna, he, he, she saw uh, the universal form of Lord Krishna when Krishna was a baby and he yawned and within his mouth, all the planets and universes were there. And second time, he ate some of the soil part particles from the ground and mother was furious. Mother Yashoda, she wanted him to show his mouth and then when he showed his mouth, the entire universes were there. And also one person who was given this opportunity to see universal form, but could not see. Can anybody name him? Who was he? Duryodhana. You will remember Duryodhana? Krishna had gone to Duryodhana with the proposal for peace. 
he didn't want the battle to take place. He said, give them this, this much, this much, this much, or even this little one, or even the five blazes. But they did not agree. Duryodhan was so furious, and he did not realize the divinity of Krishna. So what he did, he wanted to uh, uh, arrest him. And at that moment, Krishna just showed him the universal form. But the effulgence was so much, so brilliance was so high that uh, Duryodhan could not see. So I think you will remember who, who all had seen this universal form of Lord Krishna. So now, thousands, yes, Mataji. You would like to add something or say something? So, so okay. The brilliance uh, of th hundreds of thousands, that means hundred thousand suns was there emitting from Lord Krishna's uh, universal form. So now I, I'll put a question here. This universal form of Krishna, is it uh, temporary or it is a permanent? Anyone can unmute and answer? It's temporary, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Temporary, yes, very true, Prabhu. Why temporary, Prabhuji? Why? Because actually, I don't know if uh, any of uh, these incarnations actually came into existence except that it was shown to the, these devotees. Anybody else would like to add? Any other devotee, please? What Prabhu has said? Anyway, very nice, Prabhuji. Thank you. So, it is a temporary. It is not permanent. Permanent form is transcendental. This is also transcendental. Both are transcendental because it is Lord Krishna's uh, body ultimately. The, this is in the material world which so it is temporary just to convince as I told you for four reasons Krishna showed this universal form but he is eternally present in transcendental form in Koloka Vrindavan. So this was just for manifestation. It was a transient or temporary though it was uh, transcendental, it was the Lord, Lord Krishna, whenever he appears, he is always transcendental. Nothing to do with material uh, elements of his uh, transcendental body. At then 11.13, uh, at that time, Arjuna could see the universal form of the Lord, the unlimited expansions of universe situated in one place, although divided into many, many thousands. So all the planets, all the universes, all the living entities, all his cosmic manifestations and creations, they were visible at one place, in one place. And simultaneously, all unlimited, he could not even, and in this picture you can see the Lord Brahma is there, Shiva, all kind of demons, uh, then the demigods and other people, they are present within his body here, this universal form. Then bewildered and astonished, verse number 14 says, his hair standing on end, Arjuna began to pray with folded hands, offering obeisances to the Supreme Lord. Earlier, the relationship between the Krishna and between Krishna and Arjuna was that of a friend. The Sakya Rasa was there. Now he is scared seeing this magnificent but fearful form of Lord, his friend. So he begins praying. So the rasa has changed, the relationship between Krishna and Arjuna has changed. Now from Sakya, it is to the, uh, to the uh, Asharya or rather Bhayankar, uh, Bhayankar uh, rasa. So he starts praying to Lord Krishna, says that, my dear Lord Krishna, I see assembled together. Now Krishna, Arjuna is describing what he is seeing. Earlier, Sanjaya was describing to Dhritaras what was he able to see. Now Arjuna, of seeing this, after seeing this universal form, he uh, pays obeisances to Lord Krishna and prays. Assembled together in body, all the demigods and various other living entities. I see Brahma sitting on the lotus flower, as well as Lord Shiva and many sages and divine serpents. So we have seen all those manifestations in the last chapter, that 82 manifestations, cosmic manifestation, which were just a fragment of his multiple, immeasurable, innumerable, uh, you know, uh, manifestations that now Krishna, uh, Arjuna was able to behold. Oh, Lord of the universe, I see in your universal body many, many forms, bellies, mouths, eyes, expanded without limit. 
So valleys, mouths, and eyes expanded without limit. There is no end, there is no beginning, and there is no middle to all this. So the expanse was so wide that can whatever we see, uh, it has got a beginning. We can see the shape. Where does it begin? Where does it end? What is the middle part of it? But we can also see something which has got no beginning, no end, no middle. Can anybody name such a place which we see, which has got these features with our naked eyes? It's very simple. If anybody could guess it. What about the sky? The expanse of the sky is so vast that we do not see its middle. We don't see it. Or, or, or the earth, we can't see its uh, beginning. We can't see its middle. We can't see it. So these two things are there for us to know. But within this universal form, there are multiple mouths bellies and eyes because all the living entities existing in any of the planets or universes, they were visible in this uh, universal form. So that is why there are so many numerous eyes and so Krishna, Arjuna is now astonished and bewildered and he is wondering about his friend. How come? So now he says in 17 that your form adorned with various crowns, clubs and discs is difficult to see because of its glaring effulgence. Glaring effulgence, as I mentioned earlier, as I mentioned in the earlier verse, hundreds of thousands of sun, effulgence of hundreds. You can imagine that how sun is bright during summertime. We can't glare at sun at all. We can't glare, uh, we can't see even the glare of the sunshine during summer period. Now there are hundreds of thousands, so which is so fiery and immeasurable like the sun. You are the supreme primal objective. Now he realizes. He is convinced what he heard in chapter 7, chapter 8, chapter 9 and chapter 10 that you are primal objective. That means everything has emanated from you. You are the primary creator. You are the best in all the universes. You are inexhaustible. That means you never, there is no end, beginning, there is no end to you. And you are the oldest. Oldest because he, was, he is the primary creator. Nobody existed before him. Even the Lord Brahma, the Lord Vishnu, they all, Vishnu and Brahma, they all were uh, created by Lord Krishna himself afterwards. So you are the maintainer of the religion, the internal personality of Godhead. The maintainer of religion, uh, in earlier chapter, Yada Yada Hi Dharma Si Glanir Bhavati Bharata, uh, the Lord says that whenever there is decline in religious principle and the, uh, the in order to establish Yada, then he says that uh, to establish the religious principle he, that have gone to the forest, I appear from millennium to millennium. So he is the maintainer of religion, the eternal personal, personality of Godhead. Then furthermore, you are the origin without, in this picture you have seen the numerous forms of gods, demigods and demons and everybody, so many eyes, so many personalities and surrounded by this yellow uh, effulgence that is the glow emitting from the uh, divine transcendental body of Lord Krishna. So that he says that you are the origin without beginning, middle and end and you have numberless arms and the sun and moon are among your great unlimited eyes. The sun and moon have been compared to me, the eyes of the Lord. By your own radiance, you are heating this entire universe. We know the Heat, sun gives us light and heat, and heat gives us, uh, you know, rains. And because of evaporation of water, rains. And that is how rains produce crops, and crops produce grains. Grains are offered for sacrifice, and for by sacrifice, the human life is sustained. So this is what is Krishna, that Arjuna is saying. Among your, by your radiance, you are, heating this entire universe and you are also maintainer of that universe by your creations, uh, by your uh, creation of water, clouds and all those things. Although you are one, you are spread throughout the sky and the planets and all spaces between 
O great one, as I behold this terrible form, I see that all the planet planetary systems are perplexed. Now, everybody is perplexed by seeing this. All the universes which enter into the bodies of uh, Lord Krishna in the universal form, they are perturbed. And one of the planets, you know, the Brahma Loka and Shiva Loka and Indra Loka, they, that, they are also residing in these planets. So they are also perplexed and bewildered what is happening here. So all the demigods are surrendering and entering too. So after getting so much shock and uh, surprise uh, by seeing this uh, kind of and getting scared by seeing the universal form of Lord Krishna, and then demigods, they surrender and enter into you. They are very much afraid and with folded hands, they are singing the Vedic hymns. They are singing the prayers to Lord to save them, to, uh, pro uh, to protect them, because they know that Krishna is a Kala Sarupa. He, he is the he is the in fact the creator, the maintainer, and ultimately he is the annihilator also. So everything ultimately will merge into Krishna. So in further 23, Krishna says. Oh, the Arjuna says, O oh, mighty Arman, all the planets with their demigods are disturbed at seeing your many faces, eyes, arms, bellies, and legs, and your terrible teeth. As they are disturbed, so I am, so am I. So the rasa, as I mentioned, from sake to bibhats and ashari or wonder. This, this is the relationship which has now developed between the two. And not only he, all the demigods are also scared of him. Oh, all permitting Vishnu, I can no longer maintain my equilibrium. Seeing your radiant colors fill the skies and beholding your eyes and mouth, I am afraid. So this is the change of Rasa, as I mentioned. Now he is scared of seeing this form of Lord Krishna because he has known Krishna as his dear friend or dear only. So blazing fire is coming through his mouth and he's, it is spreading throughout. And even demigods are praying that please come, uh, please protect us, please save us. So rasa changes uh, from, um, you know, sake to divas and ashari or wonder. So there are two analogies uh, here given here. First is that, you know, that there are multiple rivers that are rushing from north to south to merge into the ocean. But the ocean remains the same. Same state is that of Lord Krishna's universal form. Though so many planets, so many living entities, so many uh, uh, universes and every other manifestation, cosmic manifestation that is rushing all into Krishna's body. But Krishna is quiet and calm. That is one analogy. And second analogy is, you know, that of you must have seen during a rainy season that uh, on the street lights, uh, when the light is on in the evening, what happens? A lot of moths and insects, they rush towards the, uh, the bulb, which is hot, and they just strike it and they uh, get killed and they fall down. So this is what Arjuna is seeing, that all these living entities, demigods, including all Bhishma Pitamaha, Duryodhana, all these fighters, except the Pandavas, they are entire armies. They are all rushing into the mouth of Lord Krishna and they are getting devastated or completely destroyed because of they are getting crushed within in the un, in the teeth of uh, un, under the teeth of Lord Krishna. So now he is very much uh, very much scared and that he says that I am afraid because Chris, at this universal form is all devouring. It is eating up or finishing up everything. So all the sons of Dhritarashtra, along with their allied kings and Bhishma, Drona, Karna and all other soldiers are rushing into your mouth. Their heads smashed by your fearful teeth. I see that some are being crushed between your teeth as well. So you can see that the uh, you will remember what are the five main themes which, are, which have been discussed in uh, this Bhagavad Gita. Anybody can unmute and answer. Five important themes of Bhagavad Gita, which Lord Krishna has talked about. Chapter 1. Jiva, Ishvara, Prakriti, Kal, and Karma. Karma. Thank you, Mataji. So, 
Krishna has talked about Kaal. He is Kaal Swarupa, the time personified. And you do Sudarshan Chakra, that represents the Kala. And the, with Kaal, everything is changing. You know, uh, with, take example, what are the six uh, changes that we undergo as a material in our material body, Mataji, or Prabhuji, anyone? We have read those things. Six changes that material body undergoes with the passage of time. Birth. Between birth and death, four changes. We get told we produce young ones. Yes, Prabhuji. I remember only this much, Prabhu. Sorry. So there is birth, then there is growth. After growth, there is maintenance. Then there is dwindling. Before dwindling, there is some production of some effects. And after effects, then there is dwindling and ultimately vanishes. But Krishna, this is not happening with Krishna. He does not, his body is transcendental. It is not material. It does not go any under, undergo any change. He is always young youth looking age of 16 years. Whenever you see, even at the age of 108 years, he was 98 when this war, uh, battle was taking place. At that time, he was looking like a youth. So, you know, he is a Kal Surupa and all Kal, this time destroys everything. We know time changes everything. Time destroys everything. Mountains are created. Mountains are destroyed. Rivers are created. Rivers are destroyed ultimately or right. So uh, everything which has been created is subject to a change, but Lord Krishna is not. So what he is saying that with the passage of time, everyone present in the uh, battlefield is getting killed between, and some are getting crushed between the, his teeth, which are numerous. As the rivers flow into the sea, so all these great warriors enter your blazing mouths and perish. So this is the scene. This is Kala Chakra, a representative of Krishna's, one of the opponents, that he is time. Krishna says, I am time and I devour everyone. I destroy everything. He says, the blessed Lord said that time I am destroyed of the worlds and I have come to engage all people with the exception of you, the Pandavas. All the soldiers here on both sides will be uh, slain. So we, we know now this is an indication to Arjuna that this is my uh, you know decision or um, the, uh, my uh, you know action that all everybody present in this battlefield is going to be killed. So uh, and because I am Kal and they are destined to kill. If if, they, if you don't kill them, you know in chapter number one he was very reluctant. With the, he gave five six reasons that I cannot fight. Okay. Firstly, they are so many reasons he gave. So Krishna says, no, now they have already been destroyed by me. So you have to be just my agent and follow my instructions. So that way Arjuna is being told that you are going to be victorious because all everybody except the Pandavas, the five Pandavas who are on the path of Dharma or true religion, everybody is going to get killed. Tasma Tom Uttishta Yeshu. Yes, Mataji, sorry. 33. means one who is expert in shooting arrows. Nimitta matra bhav, just be uh, the uh, just be the cause for it, cause for it. And what why? Tasma tom utishta yashod lavkasva. Therefore, you stand up and fight, and yasho lavasva. That uh, that honor, that prestige, or that fame. Yash means fame. Get the benefit of that fame. What is that fame? That you will be the winner. When a, there are two. Uh, you know, armies, two captains of two armies, one that, you know, defeated the other wins. That the one who wins gets the benefit of getting, becoming Ishashri or famous. So, get this uh, Jeeva Shatrun Bhutswa, that 
जितवा शत्रु दैट मीन्स विन दीज एनिमीज एंड राज्यम समृद्धम दैट ऑपुलेंट राज्य ऑफ हस्तिनापुर यू एंजॉय दैट राज्य आफ्टर बिकमिंग विक्टोरियस नेता पूर्व विवाह दैट मीन्स आई हैव ऑलरेडी मये विद वेते नेताह पूर्वम एवा आई हैव ऑलरेडी किल्ड ऑल दीज पीपल निमित्त मात्र जस्ट बी द इंस्ट्रूमेंट इन माई हैंड यू आर एक्सपर्ट शूटर ऑफ एरोज सो देर फॉर गेट अप एंड प्रिपेयर टू फाइट आफ्टर कॉन्करिंग यूर एनिमीज यू विल एंजॉय द फ्लोरिशिंग किंगडम हस्तिनापुर दे आर ऑलरेडी पुट अन टू डेथ पुट टू डेथ बाई माई अरेंजमेंट एंड यू सो ओ सब बिसाची कैन बी बट एन इंस्ट्रूमेंट इन द फाइट सो यू यू विल रिमेंबर दैट दे हैव ऑलरेडी बीन पुट टू डेथ बाई माई अरेंजमेंट Krishna now tells them that earlier also, uh, Krishna in chapter number two, Krishna had said that if you win, then you will uh, enjoy the, uh, the opulence of your state or the ruling of your uh, throne. And if you lose or if you get killed in the war, then you will go to the higher planets because a soldier who gets killed in in action in the battlefield, he attains higher uh, planets. So. So, so two things, either or two things are going to happen, and in both case you are going to be victorious. Here, since I have killed everybody, just become an instrument. So, Lord is this is the uh, this is the beauty of Lord that for a pure devotee, He is so merciful. He He wants to give credit to the devotee. He doesn't want to take credit himself. So that is why Krishna is asking to become just an instrument in this fight and enjoy this. Uh, but in, and he has assured that they are all going to get killed because it, this is my arrangement. It is divine arrangement that all all are going to be killed. So this is how uh, is a reassurance for Arjuna, who knows that Krishna is supreme personality of of Godhead. Godhead, he is he is the primary creator, and he can do anything. Uh, I mean, uh, in the battlefield, except fighting himself. So he is guiding, and this is how. A guru shishya parampara is there. Krishna is the guru here, and Arjuna is uh, shishya or the disciple. And this is how Krishna consciousness is about all about. The, there is disciplic succession. Gurus after gurus, spiritual master after spiritual masters. The divine message is coming on as it is passed on to us, and we are fortunate. We have, let us thank, uh, pay our obeisances to. Shila Prabhupada, who has given this opportunity to understand this uh, complex uh, and very complicated Bhagavad Gita in very so simple and uh, easy words, because our knowledge is very very poor and very limited also. So uh, Krishna says that I have already, by my arrangement, all those who are present in battlefield they are already killed. Now this now sir, now this is a Sanjay's uh, section again. Thirty-five uh, onwards, Sanjaya said to Dhritarashtra, "O Kinga, after hearing these words from the supreme personality of Godhead, Arjuna trembled, fearfully offered obeisances with folded hands, and began faltering to speak as follows: What he says, O Rishi Kesha, the world becomes joyful hearing your name, and thus everyone becomes attached to you. Although the perfected beings offer you their respect in homage, the demons are afraid." and they flee here and there all this is rightly done now rishikesha what does rishikesha means chapter 2 controller of senses sorry prabhu ji controller of the senses controller of senses okay so in fact he is the owner of senses and he controls the senses of all living beings right so uh there is a difference between what happens in krishna consciousness to the devotees and what happens to atheists who do not believe in krishna the the they deride the atheists they deride krishna they, they do not believe that he is supreme personality of god he is the supreme god and naturally when seeing this uh, this uh, 
uh, devastating form or universal form, they, the demons are very much afraid. They are getting killed within his, and uh, rushing into his dead body and getting crushed into between his teeth. Whereas the demigods who are pious people, they are praying. They are paying obeisances, though they are scared also, fearful, but still they are praying with folded hands. So this is the difference between the demons and the demigods or the pious devotees of Lord or disciples. Then he says, O great one, who stands ever, even Brahma, you are the original master. Why should they not offer their homage up, up to you? O limitless one, O refuse of the universe, you are the invincible source, the cause of all causes, the transcendental to this material manifestation. So this is again in the praise of Lord Krishna. We have already discussed these prayers that he is cause of all causes. He is Adi Purush. He is primary creator. He has created Brahma. Uh, then he created Vishnu first. And I told you first he expanded as Balaram. After Balaram, Balaram expanded into four. First was Vasudeva. Second was Sankarsana. Third was Pradyumna. And fourth was uh, Aniruddha, and this first Sankarsana again incarnated into form of second Maha, second Sankarsana, and second from second Sankarsana came Mahavishnu, and from Mahavishnu this Garbhodak Sai Vishnu, Karna Sai Vishnu, Garbhodak Sai Vishnu, and uh, Shiro Sai Vishnu. In this order they were created. So he is the primal, you are the, you stand above Brahma, of course, the creator stands above the creation. So you are the original personality, personality the Godhead, you are the only sanctuary of this manifested cosmic bird. So Krishna has already said, Maya Tata Midam Sarvam, Jagat Abhyakt Murtina, in my unmanifested form, I reside or I, I uh, am Per pervading entire universe in my creations. You know everything because he is he is the uh, he is the source of everything. So he knows everything, and you are all that is knowable. And there is nothing more one should able be able to learn other than your glorious uh, attitudes or attributes, your beautiful name, your pastimes, your attributes, and of course your form. That is all same. Krishna's name and form are same. When we say Krishna, we the form is there instantly before our eyes or our mind. So you know everything and you are all that is knowable. You are above the material modes because three modes of material nature have been created by Lord Krishna. So he is master of three modes of material nature. He is the creator, so they, he is not affected by modes. But we material uh, bodies or material living entities, we are under control of three modes of material nature. And because we keep on taking, you know, repeated birth and deaths, uh, we entering into this cycle of birth and death because we have got material desire, material body. Only thing which is divine, which is not uh, the two things which are transcendental in this material body. What are they? Anybody would like to comment? What are two transcendental uh, things which are uh, objects which are present in our material body? Anyone? What about the soul and super soul? They are transcendental. They are part and parcel of Lord Krishna. Right? But rest of the things, because of our desire, because of our intense propensity at the time of leaving past body and also unfulfilled desires, we keep on taking these material forms, sometimes dog, cat, bird, a fish or maybe a human being. So you are the... You are above the material worlds, O oh, limitless form. The whole cosmic manifestation is pervaded by you. Now, he is totally surrendered. Uh, now he realizes that uh, what kind of folly he has committed in past in his childhood with his childhood friend. I have in the past addressed you as O oh Krishna, O oh Yadava, O oh my friend, without knowing your glories. Please forgive me whatever I may have done in madness or in love. I have dishonored you many times while relaxing or while lying on the same bed or eating together, sometimes alone and sometimes in presence of many friends. Please excuse me for all my offenses. So this is a realization now. He realizes that what he has, he has offended 
Now, Lord Krishna, who is Supreme Personality of Godhead, he has understood him or taken him as an ordinary friend, as an ordinary living entity or human person with material body. Now he is regretting. So what is this? This You see, the relationship is again changing between Arjuna and Krishna here. Earlier, he, there was, uh, you know, there's a Sakyam Bhav, ras, the five prime, you know, Rasas are there. Five Rasas are primary and seven Rasas are secondary. So first initial relationship was with that of Sakya, that was primary relationship, that is primary Rasa. Then it changed to Bhimas and also uh, Wonder. And now again he is returning to the primary Rasa of Dasyam. Please excuse me for all my offenses. So the relationship you can see by watching the universal form, it has taken so many steps or so many changes and ultimately he has surrendered again to Lord Krishna here. And first time he accepted Krishna as a spiritual master. Hello? Yes, Mataji? Hello? Yes? Please mute yourself if there is uh, communication from outside. So, Earlier he has surrendered in chapter 2, Shishyat Aham, when he accepted Krishna as supreme uh, as spiritual master and surrendered to him because he was unsure and Shanishtitam uh, Bruhitan. Then he for, uh, for certain he asked that please tell me what is my duty in, in this battlefield. And second time now he is again seeking forgiveness for what he has done. After seeing this universal form, which I have never seen before, I am gladdened. But at the same time, my mind is disturbed with fear. Therefore, please bestow your grace upon me and reveal me again your form as the personality of Godhead, O Lord of Lords, O abode of the universe. Now, he is praying to, to Lord Krishna that kindly wind up this, uh, this uh, universal form. I am I'm not able to behold it because I am scared now. And now he, as a disciple, he surrendered to Krishna again. Now this, uh, this is uh, the change of rasas that we have discussed already. So he wants Krishna to revert back to his original form of Supreme Personality of Godhead, O Lord of Lord, Lords and O Abode of the Universe. So, O best of the Kuru warriors, no one before, now Krishna is telling Arjuna, O best of the Kuru warriors, no one before you has ever seen this universal form of mind. For neither by studying the Vedas, or nor by performing sacrifices, nor by charities or similar activities can this form be seen. Only you have seen this form. So that means this is an indication of Lord Krishna that Bhakti Yoga is supreme again here. By Karma Yoga, by philosophical speculations, by mystic practices, by mysticism or by Jnana, Krishna cannot be understood. Krishna can be understood by pure heart only. Pure heart of a pure devotee who renders pure loving devotional service to Krishna. And then what kind of uh, bhakti uh, that I, we discussed yesterday, of course, that Anni Avilashita Sunyam, this is Chaitan Charitramrat uh, uh, from uh, uh, Madhya Leela, uh, the Anni Abhilashita Sunyam Gyan Karmadi Anavratam devoid of all kind of jnana and karma. Anpule Neu Krishnau Shilanam Bhaktir Uttamam. The, the, the bhakti or devotion service which is favorable to Krishna, which Krishna accepts, that is the best form of the bhakti or that is the pure devotional service. So nobody can understand Krishna. But Krishna himself says that these karmis, these jnanis, these yogis, through their knowledge, through their practices of sacrifice and mystic powers, they cannot understand me. It is you only, because you are a uh, pure devotee of mind, you can put, be, be, withhold my universal form by mercy, by my mercy only. We remember that uh, we had discussed this point, what, uh, why Krishna, uh, uh, Arjuna was eligible to uh, behold this universal form. What qualification Arjuna had to receive this message, divine message of Bhagavad Gita? Can anybody recapitulate what we mentioned yesterday?
five points I discussed yesterday. Anyone, Prabhuji or Mataji? First, he was a devotee. Second, he was surrendered soul. Third, he was friend. Fourth, he was non envious. And he was a pure devotee and surrendered soul and to the Krishna. So these are three, four or five reasons uh, which, which made Krishna uh, reveal his uh, universal form to Arjuna. And most important is non-envious, being non-envious. People are envious of Krishna. You know, after reading some parts of Bhagavad Gita, especially these opulences and the, uh, the confidential knowledge, people become envious of Krishna. Oh, he is boasting. How is it possible? So this is the mentality of atheist of Brahmavadis. They do not believe that Krishna is a person. Brahmavadis, they believe in Brahman effulgence. They want to merge into it. There is no rasa or relationship between the, the Brahma Jyoti and a devotee there. But here, devotee wants to do eternal devotional service to Krishna. So this relationship is there. So this is the qualification of Arjuna that he could listen this message of Bhagavad Gita and also he could behold this beautiful form of universal, though it was very scary and fearsome. So your mind has been perturbed upon seeing this horrible feature of mind. Now let it be finished. My devotee, be free from all disturbance. With a peaceful mind, you can now see the form you desire. So that means, this is another point that Krishna is in favor of opulence. That Krishna can change his form from his two-armed form to four-armed forms to universal form and again revert back to four-armed forms and again to two at the request of devotee, that you remember we talked yesterday that Mother Devki, when he appeared before Mother Devki at a small child, he was in a four-armed form, that Narayan form. She was scared, said, you can't have relationship with four-armed form. You can't have relationship with this universal form. So she prayed that, please come as a small baby or a small child to me. Then he transformed himself into two-armed form. So this is the uh, opulence of Lord Krishna. So now devotee, pure devotee, he, wa he wanted to see this universal form. Krishna showed him this universal form and ultimately after seeing this form, he surrendered unto it. Uh, Krishna, he paid obeisances and paid so many prayers and ultimately he requested them that now please show me your original form. And uh, this is the uh, Chaturbhuji form. You can see beautiful picture of uh, Vishnu uh, Chaturbhuji uh, Narayan form, the uh, Shankar Chakrapad uh, uh, in his hands. And this form has been revealed by uh, Krishna in Srimad Bhagavatam at multiple places. Firstly, Devaki Mata saw it. Then in Srimad Bhagavatam, as I told you in Canto number one, Vishnu Pitama, when he was lying on the bed of arrow, he this uh, he prayed to prayed to to um, Krishna to show his Narayan form in Canto number four. Uh, Dhruva Maharaj also prayed, then the Narayan form was revealed to by Krishna to him. And then uh, Canto uh, Canto number uh, Canto number three, Anirudra also prayed. And in Canto number six, uh, Lord Shiva prayed to, to, for this form to be seen by him. So, but all these had never seen universal form. So you can see that Krishna is so beautiful even in his fourth. But we as a devotee we cannot have any kind of rasa or a relationship with this four armed form. That is why devotees always pray to see Krishna in his Sham Sundar form. The form that he is in the form of Sham Sundar, two armed form, that dark complexion and with Radha Rani. That is what every devotee desires to see. So Krishna is sure that be peaceful in your mind now. You are perturbed seeing my universal form. Be peaceful. I'll show you my this uh, Quran form. So you can see in this picture, sorry, in this picture, the earlier picture, the picture behind is Quran form. And then Arjuna is with bowing head, uh, with bow down head and folded hands. He's praying to uh, the Quran form of Lord Krishna to convert into two-armed form, who is the or, which is the original form and which he wants to see.
So Sanjaya said to Dhrishtras, the Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna, while speaking thus to Arjuna, displayed his real forearm form, which I have described has been mentioned in Srimad Bhagavatam at multiple places and which many pure devotees have seen. And at last, he showed him two armed form, thus encouraging the fearful Arjuna. Arjuna was very disturbed and uh, upset and he was terrified. So in, these are some of the last verses. When Arjuna thus saw Krishna in his original form, he said, seeing his human-like form, so very beautiful. So my mind is now pacified. I'm dis I was disturbed seeing your universal form, but I am now at peace and my mind is settled. I am no longer so fearful now and I am restored to my original nature. What was the original nature of Arjuna? A humble, submitted, uh, submissive devotee of Krishna. This is his original nature. Because he has always prayed in Srimad Bhagavad Gita, uh, in Bhagavad Gita, uh, many places, please tell me this, please tell me this. So he is a very submissive uh, inquiries and uh, and also so many doubts he has uh, asked to be cleared but from Lord Krishna. The blessed Lord said that, my dear Arjuna, the form which you are now seeing is very difficult to behold. Even the two-arm form is very, very... Demigods have not seen Krishna in two-arm form. Even the demigods are ever seeking the opportunity to see this form, which is so dear. Which is so dear, I just now mentioned that two-arm form or the Shamsundar form of Lord Krishna is very, very dear to each and every one. Oh, my dear Arjuna, only by undivided devotional service can I be understood as I am, standing before you and can thus be seen directly. Only in this way can you enter into the mysteries of my understanding. And the, if you remember in the beginning of this chapter, uh, chapter 11 and in the chapter 10 also, Krishna at the end of chapter 10 said, what is the need of knowing all these things about me? Appearances. Just see me as I am, to one form. Surrender unto me, worship me, pay obeisances to me, and get absorbed in me. Manmana mad bhakto. So there is no need to see, but because of four reasons I mentioned earlier that Arjuna wanted to see this universal form. Because he was curious how entire universe, planets, living entities, cosmic manifestations, creations, opulences, they are all resting within the body of Lord Krishna. So, a pure devotee Arjuna was, so Krishna was merciful to, is very, very merciful to his pure devotees, like Srila Prabhupada, despite so many difficulties and physical and financial and other kind of health-related issues, he was, took up the orders of his spiritual master, Bhakti, Bhakti Siddhant Saraswati Goswami uh, um, Maharaj, and traveled to USA in the at the age of 69. And within short span of 10 to 12 years, he uh, traveled entire globe 12 times, published numerous books, wrote many commentaries, papers, books, and uh, so many, so many literatures, published magazines, published periodicals, for just for the benefit of all of us. So it is our good fortune that by studying those uh, literature, we can have some understanding of Krishna, provided our heart is pure, provided we are surrendered to Krishna, provided we surrender to Krishna consciousness and get away from material entanglement and sense gratification or sense enjoyment. So pure bhakti is the only way by which a devotee can understand or can have a vision of Lord Krishna. So, yes, Mataji. Bhaktya tvananyaya shakya ahamevam vidhorjuna jnatum drashtum cha tatvena praveshtum cha parantapa Very nice. Thank you, Mataji. My dear Arjuna, only by undivided devotional service can I be understood as I am and standing before you and can thus be seen directly. Only in this way can you enter into the mysteries of my understanding. So Krishna, we talked about unalloyed devotional service yesterday. 
So Krishna is Satchit Ananda Vigra. He is the Sarvakaran Karanam. He is the He is the cause of all causes, and he is so simple in his uh, uh, and so easy to be you know um, uh, you know easy to be pleased by pure devotional service. So Krishna ultimately last in the last verse he says that I can be understood only through devotional service. Uh, devotional, pure devotional service. And he says there is no need for serve the, the, in chapter number 18, we will uh, listen to this verse, serve dharman paritaj. He says that forget all about all, all, all kind of religions. What are religions? Religion means dharma, earth, kama and moksha. The religion means performance of the prescribed duty as per the varna and ashrama. So he says, and religion also means karma yoga, jnana yoga and ashtang yoga. He says, forget all these uh, religions. Just surrender unto me and become a pure devotee. Render loving, transcendental loving service, devo devotional service unto me, and then you can understand my mystery. So this is the last verse, one more verse. Yes, yes, Mataji. Mat karma krin mat paramaha, mat bhakta sanga varjitaha. Nirveira sarva bhuteshu Yes, sama meti pandava. My Hare dear Arjuna, thank you, Mataji. My dear Arjuna, one who is engaged in my pure devotional service, free from contaminations of previous activities. What are those previous activities? Previous activities are material uh, entanglement, sense gratification. Many we have we have committed many, many sinful activities in our many previous lives. So he says that free from the contaminations of previous activities and free from mental speculation. Forget about what, whatever sins you have performed in your, you have done in this life or many, many previous life. Forget about mental speculation. That means philosophical approach. That is Brahmavadis or the, the uh, Brahmavadis who believe in speculate about Brahma Jyoti only, which is just a feature of Lord Krishna, who is friendly to every living entity, certainly comes to me. So he says he's friendly to every. So this is the quality of a Vaishnava. A Vaishnava is always friendly and very submissive. He is, he is, there are three states of you know devotees, Kanishta um, Dikari, um, Madhya Dikari, and Uttama Dikari. We'll talk about it some other day anyway. Uh, so by being submissive, by rendering pure devotional service one can certainly go to Boloka Vrindavan. And what is happening in this picture? Briefly, can anybody summarize what is happening quickly? Anyone? Prabhuji's or Mataji's? Yes, anyone, please. They are uh, uh, getting salvation and all that. I mean, they are being accepted by the Lord. But who is, is this? It so? This, yeah, it is. You are right, partly, Mataji. Who is this here in the uh, in the garden? No, I'm. I'm. My name is Jayanti Balaji. Okay, Mataji. No, no, I'm not asking. This. Who is this person that uh, this uh, being hold by this person? My arrow is moving. Vishnu Dutas. Yes, Prabhuji. These are Vishnu Dutas. This is Vishnu's Vahan, and this is Ajamila. We, do you remember the story of Ajamila? So this is the Benge, uh, uh, river Ganges banks at Haridwar. Second chance written book by, written book written by the. You remember that uh, his son, the youngest of his son was name was uh, Narayan, and at the time he was very much attached to this. At the time of living in Tibauti, he was so attached, so he started calling Narayan, Narayan. At the same time. The Vishnu Dutas came at the same time Yam Dutas came because he was a very impious person, a criminal, uh, all kind of murder, decoity, and all kind of uh, crimes he had or sins he had performed. So Yam Duta came. But at the time of leaving his body, he called for Narayana. In fact, he was calling the name of his son. But Lord Narayana, because Lord Narayan's name is a uh, is gives the mukti or salvation. So the Vishnu Dutas also came. There was a quarrel between two. Who will take this soul? Then since Lord Vishnu said that now he has since he has uh, intensely prayed my name, though maybe mistakenly, 
let him uh, be given a, a second chance. So he was given a, the, both the Yamdutas and you know, Vishnu Dutas. Vishnu Dutas are four uh, armed. You can see all the Dutas and Vishnu Lok, everybody is a four armed. So Vishnu Dutas and Yamduta returned, and Lord Narayana gave him an, another chance to realize his, to do penance for his, you know, for his uh, uh, misdeeds and the sins he had committed. Then at the end, the Vishnu Duta has come to uh, receive uh, this Ajamila and then he becomes, goes to Narayan Lok. So this is how Lord Krishna is saying here, who is friendly to every living entity certainly comes to me. My pure devotees certainly come to me. This is what happened. So we come to end, uh, end of this 11th chapter. This is the summary. Uh, we have already overshot the time, so I have not summarized. But if there is any other question or doubt, you may please ask. And the attendance form Mataji has already submitted, uh, circulated in the in the in the uh, chat box. Please fill your attendance before leaving. If any doubt or suggestion or correction or amendment or addition, you would like to uh, please. You are welcome to mention. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji Mataji, am I audible? Am I audible? Are you able to listen to me? Yes, yes. Thank you, Mataji. So, any any doubt or any question you would like to put? Okay, there being no question, and we have since we have already overshot in our time slot. So let us close. Close to this session uh, with the prayers. Pancha kalp tarubhyasya krapa sindhuva e vichaya patita nam pavne pyo vaishnava pyo namo nama anantikot vaishnava jan ki jai Shri Srila Prabhupada ki jai Shri Mad Bhagavatam ki jai Shri Mad Bhagavad Gita ki jai Sabhi Bhakt Vrindho ki jai Thank you very much all devotees. My humble obeisances to you. Dhanavad Pranam and Hare Krishna to all of you. Thank you for joining today's session. And we shall meet tomorrow again and continue with 12, chapter number 12. So thank you join, for joining again. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna Prabhu.